Hi, this is uh, Fred Bretsky. Uh, now, I've just started teaching refrigeration and uh, a couple weeks ago, I made a little video um, on the cycle of refrigeration, which is the first thing I guess you learn when you're doing refrigeration. And I'm just gonna pull that up over here. And uh, we went through the main four components. The heart of the cycle of refrigeration is the compressor so we started with the compressor which is located in the condenser then it goes through the condenser through the metering device and then back to the evaporator co coil which is located in the furnace so i did that basic video and of course as i went down being a rookie with re refrigeration i looked at about 30 videos and thank you very much to several videos for explaining it and through our state modules now it is it still was confusing. Like when I read about superheat, saturated heat, subcooling, the suction line, the vapor line, the discharge line, I had no idea where they were and what they were just from reading them sporadically put into the modules. So I decided to put together a basic AC split system for a house and then just follow the refrigerant. And every question I thought of, I would either Google or look in the modules. And I slowly figured it out. So hopefully with the help also of uh, some instructors, I'd say. So let's start with refrigerant. Refrigerant is made of different chemicals and they've made different ones over the years. The earlier ones were uh, not very friendly to the environment. Later ones now are becoming way better or way friendly to the environment. Now two common ones are R22 and R410A. And these are the same color codes from R22, I believe, is going to be phased out in 2023, meaning it won't be put in new anymore. And I think this one's going to last a little bit longer because they do have newer ones. But these are the most common. So we're going to pretend we have 410A refrigerant in this split system. What's the difference between them? Well, as you can see here, the 410A can absorb and release more heat than R22 and your AC compressor, which is found in the condenser, can run cooler, reducing the risk of compressor burnout due to overheating. It also has a larger range of pressures on it, which helps because we want to manipulate the refrigerant that is located in these lines because we want it to absorb heat and reject heat and go in a circle and thereby cool down your house. So let's figure out how they did that. So we'll just move roll merrily along here to the outside condenser condenser which you may have seen in your in many houses outside so here the condenser sits and we have two lines going into it from the house from the evaporator coil in the furnace one has like black insulation over and it. it's called the low temp low pressure superheated vapor so let's figure out what that means so I, through studying up, we're gonna, I'm gonna throw out hypothetical numbers that are cool for a normal use in the summer if it was 80 degrees out. So you see here, that's also called the suction line, not just the vapor line. This is getting sucked back to the compressor, which is inside the condenser. The suction temperature should be above 35 degrees Fahrenheit and below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So typically this one will be about 60 degrees maybe lower but around 60 degrees so it's cool to the touch if you touch it even though it's a vapor because this refrigerant has a lower boiling point so that's why it's good for manipulating temperature and pressure so only 60 degrees fahrenheit coming in we still call that a superheated vapor even though it's low temperature and low pressure right so basically let's so as you can see here we're gonna follow it and it's gonna go in here. Now I made a bit of a mistake. This one should have went in here and this one should have went in here typically, but I've left it for now. So please forgive me for that mistake. Uh, this refrigerant, which is low temperature, low pressure, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, is now getting sucked into this compressor. We'll just say it went down below here. And what happens? Well, it gets pressurized or compressed Hence, it will, the higher the pressure, the higher the temperature. 
so it's going to come out a even hotter temperature here so the heat of compression raises the temperature of the refrigerant vapor causing it to a high pressure superheated vapor so it's going to get even hotter here so it will jump from 60 degrees fahrenheit to about 180 degrees fahrenheit and that's hot now remember hot is attracted to cold if this is 180 degrees fahrenheit and we have about 80 degrees fahrenheit here it's not going to be attracted to it because this is hotter than this outside temperature so it's going to reject it and as it goes through this manifold of uh, copper piping it's going to rotate around through all these coils on this outside condenser and then this fan above here is going to suck the 80 degree Fahrenheit temperature through the 180 degree temperature and it's going to reject it and blow all the hot air out but it's also going to cool down this coil so as it cools down the latent heat of saturization takes place so as it moves into the condenser it rejects the heat in the refrigerant condensing it to it to change state and condense it to a high pressure high temperature liquid so it's still high pressure and high temperature but it went from a vapor to a liquid so it comes out of the coils here as a liquid now generally speaking this high temperature high pressure liquid is around 20 degrees warmer than the outside ambient air so if this was 80 degrees fahrenheit this is about 100 degrees fahrenheit so it's warm to the touch right so it's not cool it's warm to, it's still and now it's a liquid so now it's going to go all the way back to the evaporator in the house so let's follow it so we're going to follow the copper pipe that's going to go back to the evaporator in the house so we go right through the house wall and we're going to follow it down remember the black line was the vapor suction line this is the liquid line the copper line generally smaller than the suction line now it's going to come down and it's going to turn around and look it's going into the coil before it goes into the coil it's going to go into the filter dryer the job of the filter dryer is to remove some condensation and also protect the txv which is the metering device by removing sediment and copper filings from when you first install it which always tends to happen with copper so here it's going to turn and come around now i made a bit of a mistake i should have just ended it there so i put a little stop here it's not going to go through here it's got to go through the metering device first and another name for this metering device there's two or three different kinds the one i'm using apparently is the popular one the thermal extent expansion valve it controls the amount of refrigerant that goes through the evaporator coil and is intended to regulate the superheat of the refrigerant that flows out of the evaporator to a steady value so it's going to decrease it down to this small tube and that is going to give it a lower pressure the lower the pressure the lower the temperature so it goes up into the coil right here it's going to zigzag through all these coils and by the time it gets through here it's going to turn into a vapor because now this 40 degree it's going to absorb the heat from the house so here we have the heat sensible heat let's say it's 80 degrees when you first turn on it's going to absorb that heat and this refrigerant dropped from that 100 degrees down to 40 degrees by, by the time it comes through here that warm air is also going to get absorbed into the coil and it's going to heat this up to about 50 degrees approximately 10 degrees of superheat so that's what we call superheat when it comes out of the coil now we have to make sure or this valve that regulates it has to make sure that there's only vapor coming out of this coil right because when it comes out of the coil it's going to go back to the compressor and we can only handle vapor in the compressor so this txv valve actually has a sensing txv bulb that is strapped adjacent to the suction line and it allows no liquid to leave the evaporator coil that's its job we can't have any liquid come out of this evaporator coil so now it's strictly vapor that's going to come out. now it's 50 degrees here right coming out 
So let's follow it again. We're going to return back up and out the wall, right? This suction line, it's coming up the suction line now, right? It's the black line we're following. And normally, if you could touch it, it's normally this should be cool to the touch, right? So now we're going to go back outside again. And there we follow it. Now it's called a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. Now it heated up to 50 degrees. And now it's going to be around 60 degrees here or even 50 degrees here. It doesn't matter. Uh, but when it goes through the compressor, as we follow it here, as it goes through the compressor, it's going to jump 110, 120 degrees. So if it's 50, it'd be about 170 degrees coming out here. And then it's going to be a high pressure superheated vapor and then we just continue with the uh, refrigeration cycle it goes through uh, spreads out to all these coils the warmer air outside is rejected from the hotter uh, vapor in here and this is saturated now so at the beginning it'll be 80 percent vapor 20 percent liquid but by the time it cools down and gets to the bottom it's going to be completely liquid and then that liquid is going to be around 100 degrees here about 10 or 20 degrees warmer than the 80 degrees outside and then it goes back to the coil and goes through that cycle so there's these line sets what they do is they want if you want to test it like first of all this vapor line or the suction line if you put a line set on it let's talk a little bit about line sets so here's our line sets so the low side is the blue hose and the low side would be the suction side or the black tubing and the high side would be the smaller copper tube right which is the liquid so low is vapor and uh the red blue is vapor and the red one is liquid so those are the gauges as you can see them here the yellow one we're not going to talk about the yellow one is for, is the vacuum line for charging and evacuating the system so if i was to put this on the suck so if i was to put this line set the blue hose on this suction line and i read on it a pressure of on, we're going to use 410 so we're using this on the pressure temperature chart 100 degrees that would be 32 degrees fahrenheit and that would mean this would be freezing so that would be a problem we don't want it as low as 32 we want it around 50 or 60. so that's one way of testing and see here you see the suction temperature should be above 35 degrees fahrenheit and below 65 degrees fahrenheit under normal working conditions and so that's what enters the compressor and then the discharge line is this one right here it's going to come out way hotter because it's been pressurized, right? And then it should be between 150 and 220, right? And that's what you do with the line set gauges. There's all different ways of testing the temperature and pressure to know that your condenser and compressor are working correctly. Now, the rule of thumb is definitely we do not want any vapor or sorry, any liquid going into the compressor this has to be vapor going into the compressor and it has to be vapor coming out of the compressor it turns to a liquid after it goes through the condenser and comes out here and so that's about it for today hopefully i explained it good enough uh, i kind of answered my own questions quite often googling some information hopefully i got it right so if you're seeing this and i made mistakes I have no problem with you helping me out because I'm a rookie at this. Uh, a few things our students should know is that uh, one ton of ice is equal to, or one ton of refrigerant is equal to 12,000 BTUs of energy, right? And uh, another question I ask is, you know, when I first looked at this, I used a flat evaporator coil. And then I saw pictures of the A-frame and I thought, aren't they more common? And yes, they are more common because the flat evaporator coil or one of these coils gives about off uh, about uh, a BTU ring or about a it'll take care of a thousand feet, a thousand square feet of your house. So two of them would be twice as much. So the A-frame coil 
it gives you more refrigerant or more air conditioning than this. And then there's an N coil that's newer that's even better than the A coil. So hopefully this helped you understand a bit on refrigerant. Remember the refrigerant that goes through these lines are is man-made of different chemicals that have a lower boiling point and thereby they can be manipulated to actually turn your warm air in your house to a nice cool house in the summer. So until the next video, have a good one.